I'm Scott Borders, and welcome to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we find ourselves in downtown Cincinnati in front of the beautiful Hamilton County Courthouse, and joining me is the Honorable Judge Melba Marsh. Judge, how are you doing today? I'm fine. Hi, Scott. How are you? Welcome it, to the courthouse. It is great to be here, and I know this has some tremendous history oh, to this building, and it starts right with the inception. If you look at it, it looks kind of like a fortress it is almost. A fortress, so guys. tell us a little bit about it. It was the house that was created because of fire. Let me set the scene for you. This is the seventh Hamilton County Courthouse. The first Hamilton County Courthouse was on Main Street, small log cabin. Second one made a little bit more than that, just a little bit bigger. The third was burnt by fire. And then the fourth one was brought to this particular location, approximately about $300,000. And then we come to the fifth courthouse, the one that is the main interest, 1984. I want to set the scene for you. It was in this location. There was a murder case going on in this building, and in, two individuals were on trial for killing their employer for just the sum of a couple of hundred dollars. And what happened was the first individual was convicted and hanged, and the second individual, the jury said not guilty to murder, but instead guilty to a way lesser charge. The public didn't like it, Cincinnati Enquirer wrote major editorials about it, and then a group of people at Memorial Hall decided to do something about it and take justice in their own hands. They walked down from Memorial Hall, they came to the courthouse to talk about justice, uh, but the, they, didn't, they didn't end with just the talking. They decided to storm the courthouse, take the prisoner, and exact their type of justice. However, the sheriff had already moved that particular prisoner and they burst into the courthouse. They attacked it. It was the year was 1884. The riot for this building went from March the 28th, the 29th and 30th until the governor sent out re relief, the uh, guard to secure the courthouse. But when the guard arrived, there was nothing left. The courthouse had been burnt to, to the crisp. Now there was one guard who actually tried to stand oh, his post and Captain they honor him. Desmond. Captain Desmond was the uh, leader of the uh, troops. He stood right in front of those doors and he said, no one passes by me. Uh, unfortunately, Desmond only had a small group of officers, uh, and the and the rioters brushed in, pushed him down, and he was killed in the in the gunfire. Now the people in Cincinnati got a little smarter after that, they did. and they decided when they were going to rebuild the courthouse, they were going to do it in a way to keep something like that from happening again. So tell us, what did they do to improve the courthouse? I call this building the building that was built to resist fire. Everything you see around this building was made with that uh, idea. We're standing on the on the plaza. Look, look at this wall that guards the courthouse on each each of the sides, and we have g torrents right on each side of the courthouse. That that's not there for, by accident. Inside, all the marble. This building was state of the art when it was built. Three million dollars. Look at all the marble that that is in the house. The stairs are marble. The walls are marble. They can't burn. How many places have you known that has his own personal moat around a building? And the reason why that this building can never be stormed. In fact, look at all the things that we had. The full first electric building, one of the first in the city of Cincinnati. Uh, it has its own central vacuum system. And the lights, the marble, the money, the spence is one of the ground jewels of this city. It still is. And I think one of the things you notice when you come in, you see the big archways. Oh, the and a lot of the architecture done, it reminds you of being in a European castle almost. Interesting you should say that. Some of the marble is directly from France. They spared no expense for this. And the craftsmanship, think of the archways. There's so many archways throughout the whole building. It is an engineering feat. And some of the courtrooms span two floors. You know, when on, I, I, I wasn't here obviously, but in October the 18th, 1918, when this was dedicated, 
we're standing right on the plaza. Think of all the people were here to say, wonderful, to, we have a courthouse and we're proud of it. Uh, the speaker that day was U.S. Senator Warren Harding, who later became president. And uh, the speeches were such that this is, this is the crown jewel of, the, of Hamilton County, a place that we're proud, a place for the Hall of Justice. And it, it has remained so. This is the 99th year uh, of this building, and I am very proud to be its presiding administrative judge uh, of this building. But what I'm most proud of is that as a kid, I've had the opportunity to live my dreams out into this building. I came here when I was nine years old. You know, I wanted to be an attorney. I had my little satchel. I used to visit all of the, all the rooms, and I'm one of the luckiest people to have been associated with this building. I worked here as a teenager. I worked here as a law clerk going through law school. Uh, I was uh, an assistant Hamilton County prosecutor in this building for over 11 years. I was a municipal court judge, and I was a common police court judge. And now, this year, the building and I share share a, a bond together. I've always loved this building and it, and it means a, very much to me. I'm not one to reminisce about first or anything of that sort, but to know that I, that kid who walked down those steps pretending to be a lawyer, I stand here talking to you as an administrative presiding judge of this courthouse. That's really a significant uh, thing for, for, for me to share and certainly for me to celebrate. And really a part of the historical lore oh, of that, this building. That, that is correct. You know, uh, I'm the first woman uh, to be presiding judge, the first African American to be presiding judge. And on this 99th year, that's one of the things that I'm so proud of. I share a history with this building. It's not inscribed anywhere on, on the building, but the building and I know each other. And I think that we that we share that, and and I'm proud of it. And I'm, I hope that it's proud of me. And this is why you've been a, a wonderful tour guide. And one of my favorite parts of getting to see this building was going upstairs to the law library. Oh, Tell us a little a, bit about it's oh. beautiful. At the time that it was built, did you see the did you see the Italian marble? Yeah. It's all green. Uh, it was built. It was meticulously picked out that way. And the chandeliers when it was built. It was the crown jewel. We're talking about the crown jewel of the building, but that was the most magnificent room. You know, the law library is open to all visitors. I hope individuals who see this make a trip to the Hamilton County Courthouse. Come and see our law library. Walk the halls. I hope that you get from this tour an invitation to see the halls of justice. You know, when the, our forefathers built this building, they made messages all around this building. If you look at all of the all of the corners and the things that I have learned from this building I've learned a lot of lessons from this building I've learned truth I learned about justice I learned about forgiveness I learned about evil from this building as a, a well but the things that the forefathers when they built this building they put special inscriptions for everybody to understand the importance of this building on the parkway sides, it says, this is, we are a government of laws and not of men. On, right behind us on this main street side, this is the administration of laws for social union. But my favorite is right there on Court Street that I think every judge and every person should know when they walk in. What does the Lord require of me but to love justice and to love mercy? I hope that this will be an invitation for individuals to come out. Next year will be our 100th anniversary, our 100th birthday. We're going to have a huge birthday party. So if you see this, look at your history in your own backyard and come down to the courthouse, come for a tour, and more importantly, just come down to discover history. Well, Judge, yes, after all, the Hamilton County Courthouse is in your backyard. That is true. Thank you so much, and you have been a wonderful wealth of knowledge about this entire area and this entire building. Well, that's been it from the Hamilton County Courthouse in downtown Cincinnati for another episode of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Scott Borders, and this is the Honorable Judge Melba Marsh. So remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and, and stop, stop often. often.